This lesson describes how we can use the central limit theorem to answer probability questions about sample means. Here's our situation. Suppose we have a large population of athletes, and in that population, the average height is 180 centimeters, and the standard deviation is six. Further suppose we were going to take a sample of 50 of these athletes and calculate the sample average of their heights. We want to know what is the probability that that sample average would exceed or be higher than 182 centimeters. Well, if we want to know something about sample averages, we need to consider the sampling distribution. Here's where the central limit theorem for means can help. The central limit theorem for means tells us three things about this sampling distribution. One, that it's normally distributed, as you can see in the picture. Second, that its mean will be the same as the population mean, in this case, 180 centimeters, and that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, also known as sigma x bar, can be calculated based on the original population standard deviation and the sample size, as shown here. So this question wants to know the probability of the sample average exceeding 182 centimeters. Well, where is 182 centimeters on my sampling distribution? Now I could draw it anywhere to the right of 180, but I'd like to get a more appropriate scale. So in order to do that, I want to show you a cool trick for proper scaling of a normal distribution. See this point here? That is roughly the steepest point on the curve. And you can find it by just sort of eyeballing it and saying, oh, that looks like the steepest point. And that steepest point has a unique quality because it is exactly one standard deviation away from the center. In other words, this distance here is one standard deviation. But in this problem, one standard deviation is 0 0.84, which means that distance is 0 0.84. Well, if that's the case, wouldn't this point be that much to the right of 180? And therefore, that tick mark would be 180.84. Now, that number is not particularly relevant to the problem. The relevant number is 182. But by finding the, that that location is 180.84, gives me a rough estimate of where 182 would be. Now, just so you know, you're not required to draw these to scale in order to get a right answer. You can have a poorly scaled diagram and a correct answer, but I prefer a better scaling. So I'll always go through the exercise of finding out where my one standard deviation point is, i.e. the steepest point on the curve, and I'll work from there. Proceeding, Let's analyze this question in red. We want to know the probability that the sample average exceeds 182. But that means that in our sampling distribution, the sample average would fall to the right of 182. Notice the red shaded area. And what I've done here is essentially convert a probability question into a shaded area question. And that's extremely helpful because we already know how to compute the shaded area under a normal curve. We need to use normal CDF or our normal cumulative distribution function. Now in order to do this, most calculators or apps or other software will want you to know a z-score or a, a standard score associated with the 182 centimeters. So I'll use, use my normal formula to compute z-score, and I find out that the 182 centimeter sample average 
corresponds to a z-score of 2.36. By the way, just as a reminder, that means that a sample size, a sample average of 182 would be 2.36 standard deviations above average. And since that red shaded area goes from a z-score of 2.36 all the way forever to the right, I'm going to use 2.36 as my lower limit and infinity as my upper limit on whatever technology you're using. And using normal cumulative distribution function with these limits gives us the exact probability that we're looking for, 0 0.009. And that means there is a 0 0.009 or just under 1% chance that a sample of 50 students will have an average higher than 182. Now I am done with this problem, but it's worth noting that as far as individual athletes in this population go, many, many more than 1% of them have heights above that. But this question isn't asking the probability that an individual athlete would have a height that exceeds 182. Many of them do. This problem is asking, if I had a sample average of 50, how likely is it that the sample average would exceed 182? And that's not very likely, as you can see by this 0 0.009. Let's examine another question. Here's the new situation. We have a population of students that spends a certain amount of time watching videos. The population average is 45 minutes, and the population standard deviation is 15 minutes. Now suppose we took a random sample of 20 of these students. Let's find the probability that the sample average would be within three minutes of the expected average of 45 minutes. Well, if we want to do a probability about sample averages, we need to examine our sampling distribution. And once again, the central limit theorem here can tell us three main things. First of all, the central limit theorem tells us that the sampling distribution is going to be normally distributed. Now, why is that? Well, because the original population is normally distributed so too will the sampling distribution be. And notice that the sample size of 20 here is less than the 30 that would be required if we didn't know the original population viewing times were normally distributed. But since we do know that the original population is normally distributed, it doesn't matter that the sample size is less than 30, we can still use the central limit theorem. The second thing the central limit theorem tells us is that the average of the sampling distribution will be equal to the population average, in this case 45 minutes. And the third thing that the central limit theorem gives us is that we can compute the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, otherwise known as sigma x bar, by using this formula along with the population standard deviation and the sample size of 20. Now let's spend a minute analyzing the phrase lies within three minutes of average. That means that we're interested in the sample average being within three minutes of 45 minutes otherwise thought of as 45 plus or minus 3. And essentially that phrase is telling us that we want to know the probability that the sample average is between 42 and 48, which you'll notice is 3 minutes to the left and 3 minutes to the right of our sample average. So, where are 42 and 48? on my sampling distribution. Well, I don't have to know exactly to scale where they are. I could put 42 anywhere to the left 
of center and 48 anywhere to the right of center, but I like my drawings to be scaled. So I'm once again going to use the steepest point on the curve trick. Find the steepest point on the curve, roughly there where the black dot is, and remind yourself that th that distance from there to center is one standard deviation. Well, in this problem, one standard deviation is 3.35. So that green arrow has a distance of 3.35, which means that this point is that much higher than 45. In other words, that's where 48.35 would be. Well, if 48.35 is there, and we were interested in knowing where 48 was, then it must be right about here. And by a similar logic, 42 would be the same distance on the other side of center. Now you don't have to know that your drawing is done to scale to get the correct answer mathematically. But again, I personally like two scale drawings that give me a better sense of what's going on in the problem. Well, back to the question in red, we want to know the probability that this sample average is between 42 and 48 minutes. In other words, we want to know this red shaded area. See what I've done here is I've converted a probability question into a shaded area question under a normal distribution. And that I know I can calculate using normal CDF. Once again, this would depend on your calculator or application or other software you're using. But generally speaking, I like to compute z-scores for the lower and upper limits of my shaded area. Using the normal formula for z-scores, I can plug those as my lower and upper limits into my normal cumulative distribution function. And whatever app or machine you're using will give you 0.632. This means that there is about a 63% chance that my 20 person sample average will be between 42 and 48 minutes for this particular population. And that completes the lesson.